I'm going to continue my series on the armor of God. My message is the helmet of salvation. Uh, before we uh, get started, I just want to say that the songs that we sang this morning were really, really important. We're in a battle. And did you notice that the first half of all them songs were about the battle? The victory is in Christ Jesus. And I thought, what, what, uh, what was the first song called? Battle something? Battle belongs. The battle belongs to God, right? Or the battle belongs to you. Well, that's God. Uh, so anyways, let's get started by reading Ephesians 6, 10 through to 17. We're a church of the word, and I make no apology for that. We read the word. We study the word. We declare the word. And uh, so uh, you'll get used to it after a while but it'll be medicine to your soul. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith which which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, by this time, you're most likely getting pretty familiar with Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through to 17. We have gone over this portion of Scripture several times now. However, the subject and content changes weekly as we discover the different pieces of the armor of God and what they mean. So let's discover this morning what the helmet of salvation means as part of God's armor. First of all, In battle, the part of you you want protected the most is your head. And the helmet is always essential to every soldier. As far back as technology goes, helmets have been worn to protect soldiers of war and are still used to this day. I want to remind you that we are putting on God's armor. Therefore, Christ Jesus is our helmet of salvation. He is our Savior, and our salvation is in Him alone. Do you believe that this morning? God questions, states, Ephesians 6, 17 instructs us to put on the whole armor of God and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, which we'll talk about next week. When a soldier uh, suited up for battle, the helmet was the last piece of armor to go on. It was the final act of readiness and preparation for combat. A helmet was always a vital was always vital for survival, protecting the brain, the command center for the rest of the body. If the head was badly damaged, the rest of the armor would be of little use. And that's so true. If we don't take care of our thoughts, if we don't take care of what goes on in our head, the rest of our armor is of little use to us. For years, I watched my son get ready for battle on the ice as a hockey player. The last steps of preparing before they got on the ice was putting on their helmet, putting on their gloves, and grabbing their stick, which was their weapon of offense. It was their sword. I brought a helmet with me today. I'm not usually a show-and-tell type of guy. But this was their line of protection. It's all padded on the inside, a little worse for wear. Seen a few sticks, a few bangs and bruises, a few shoulders into it. But head injuries are a reality in full contact sports. And helmets are the ultimate protection in battle. And so it is in the spiritual context. When, 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 When hockey players go on the ice to play, it's a battle. I don't understand why in the old days they never wore helmets. It's pretty weird. Pretty crazy. A lot of them suffered horrible atrocities because of it. 
uh, not their wives end up driving them around. Like Keith Primo, I understand, has a real hard time because of all the concussions he sustained. We know Eric Lindros and others have. There was a show called Concussion about the NFL football players. All the concussions they, they sustained. When you're in a battle, and that is a battle when they're on the field, don't, don't kid yourself. The college students, when they come out of college, they play football. There's a study out on the curvature of the spine that they have from lining up and running into each other. So, so it's a battle. There's a battle going on in these, in these different sports. And a helmet is essential for the protection of each and every one of them. And so it is with you and I. When we're in spiritual battle, we need to put on our helmet of salvation. The assurance of salvation is our impenetrable defense against anything the enemy throws at us. Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who will kill the body but cannot kill the soul but rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell, Matthew 10, 28. The idea in this verse is that as we prepare for Satan's attacks, we must grab that helmet and buckle it on tightly. Salvation is not limited to a one-time act or the past or even a future hope. God's salvation is an ongoing, eternal state that his children enjoy in the present. It is daily protection and deliverance from our sin nature. I put down our flesh because I would debate him on that because I believe we have a new nature in Christ. We're not a kingdom divided against itself, but I'll leave that for another time. It's his message. Uh, and Satan's schemes. So our salvation in Christ Jesus is our impenetrable defense against whatever the enemy throws at us. So it is essential that we understand our salvation in Christ. We have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is, our, is the Savior of the world, and he is our salvation. Body, soul, and spirit. Not only have we been saved from eternal damnation and hellfire, Jesus is our salvation in every situation. He is our salvation in times of trouble. He is our salvation from our enemies. He is our salvation financially. He's our salvation in terms of our health. In every aspect of life, Jesus is our helmet of salvation. We prayed for Eric this morning because, Eric, we believe that Jesus is the salvation for your body. He is he's going to restore you 100%. And we take it seriously. I don't want to attend a church, and I don't want to be part of a church that doesn't believe in the promises of God. He is our salvation. Get it in your head. Never let go of it. It's your helmet. I want you to hear what Clark's commentary on the helmet of salvation states. Take the helmet of salvation, or as it is expressed in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. It has been observed in the description of the Grecian armor that on the chest, crest, sorry, and other parts of the helmet, listen to this, that on the crest and on other parts of the helmet were a great variety of emblematical figures and that it was very likely the apostle refers to helmets which had on them an emblematical representation of hope. That is to say that the person should be safe who wore it, that he, would, that he should be prosperous in all his engagements and escape, and every escape, and ever escape safe from battle. So the hope of conquering every adversary and surmounting every difficulty through the blood of the Lamb is as a helmet that protects the head, an impenetrable one that the blow of battle axe cannot cleave, the hope of our continual safety and protection, built on the promises of God to which the upright follower of Jesus Christ feels he has a divine right, protects the understanding from being darkened, 
and the judgment from being confused by any temptations of Satan or subtle arguments of the sophistical ungodly, which really means the clever arguments that are false. He who carries Christ in his heart cannot be cheated out of the hope of his heaven. So our helmet provides this incredible, impenetrable protection for us. It's the helmet of salvation. We have to understand that our salvation is sure. Do you see the various ways in which the helmet of salvation provides for protection for us in the battle? It provides hope of continual safety and protection that our helmet does. Built on the promises of God, they are our divine right. So the promises of God are each and every one of our right as believers in Jesus Christ. There are promises given by God. The helmet of salvation protects us from our understanding being darkened and our judgments being confused through temptations and deception. The helmet of salvation gives us great protection and confidence in battle, knowing our salvation is sure and our Savior is with us, always making us more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Star gave us a testimony of her life. It started out pretty dismal. But God was her salvation. And as she grew in Christ, that helmet of salvation became sure and more steadfast. She had it strapped on. You know, uh, I say, put on the helmet of salvation, strap it on with the word of God, and buckle it down with the grace of God. Buckle it on there. And if you need to, put a couple wraps of tape around it. Make sure that helmet of salvation never comes off. It's important. Second Timothy three fourteen through to sixteen. But as you continue in the things you have learned and firmly believe since you know from whom you have learned them, from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for instruction, for conviction, for correction, and for training in righteousness. It is through the Scriptures that we become wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. As we spend time in God's Word, we begin to understand and comprehend our salvation in its entirety. The Scriptures make us wise unto salvation. So as we... Spend time in God's Word. It reinforces that helmet of salvation that we put on. Like I said, strap it down with the Word of God and buckle it in with the grace of God because our salvation is by grace through faith. God question states also, because of the power of the cross, our enemy no longer has any hold on us. Romans 6.10 and 8 and 2, and 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. He knows that, but he also knows that most of God's children don't know that, or at least they do not live as if they know. We must learn to keep our helmets buckled so that his fiery missiles do not lodge in our thoughts and set us on fire. Through this helmet of salvation, we can destroy arguments in every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You see that scripture in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Some important scriptures that we need to keep our mind and heart on as a helmet of salvation. 1 John 4 and 14. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. In order to have on tightly your helmet of salvation, you need to fully understand that Jesus is the Christ, and He alone is the Savior of the world. There is no room for compromise. 
There's a lot of compromising going on these days. I seen a summit online the other day where, where they call it all the Abrahamic faiths got together, the Muslims and the Judaism and, and Catholicism and, and some other uh, religions of the world. And they gathered and they said, listen, we're all the same. It's all the same. You know, we, we we're going to uh, take and form this one world religion. A and uh, Christianity was excluded from it because our salvation is in no other than Jesus Christ. It's not in Catholicism. It's not in Judaism. It's not in Islam or any other. It's in Christ Jesus. It's important. Matthew 1 and 21. She will bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. We find salvation from sin in Christ Jesus. Luke 2 and 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Confucius, not Taoism, not Hinduism or any other, the multiple world religions of the world. There is only one name given whereby we might be saved. And that's Jesus Christ. He is our helmet of salvation. Acts 4 and 12. And there is salvation in no other, no one else. For there is no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. John 1 and 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is the one who takes away the sins of the world. None of the above mentioned have the ability to do any of it. In fact, they're all in a grave somewhere. Jesus is a risen Savior. You need to be grounded and unmovable in these truths. If you ever had any doubt, settle it in your heart and your mind today. Jesus is the only way to the Father. There is salvation in no other. This world and all the principalities and the powers of darkness will try to deceive you into believing that there are other ways of salvation and there are other names whereby you can be saved. And somehow, they all lead to the Father. It's not true. Do not entertain those thoughts. And do not neglect such a great salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Hebrews 4, 3 through to 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His will. The Hebrew church is a good example of believers who have neglected to put on the armor of God. They were unskilled in the word of righteousness. They were ready to abandon their salvation in Christ and return to Judaism. They apparently never had on salvation as a helmet because they were uh, warned against neglecting such a great salvation in Jesus Christ. Confirmed by signs and wonders. We have a salvation in Christ Jesus that is confirmed by signs and wonders. Healing is real. Deliverance is real. Miracles of provision and blessing are real. We see it all the time. I want you to understand this can and does happen to this very day. People abandon their faith in Christ Jesus. Their salvation in Christ. Believers abandon their faith in Jesus Christ and it happens because they do not put on the helmet of salvation. And the devil has filled their minds with lies and deception. If you don't understand your salvation, you're in big trouble. If you don't understand your righteousness, you're in big trouble. This is why we've been going through this series systematically and taking our time. Because I don't want there to be any questions in your mind 
of both these things. That's your armor. If you do not have your loins girt about with the truth, there's a problem. You're going to be deceived. If you do not have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, you're not going to be able to stand. You're going to be barefoot in battle. If you do not have on the breastplate of righteousness, knowing that Christ is your righteousness in Him alone, someone will come along and tell you you're not righteous. That you need to work and earn and merit your salvation. And you'll fall into legalism and you'll leave the faith. Or it'll crush you. And you'll be like smoking flax and a bruised reed. That's the reality of it. So we take our time and we go through these things. And I want you to know that the helmet that you have on, you need to understand your salvation is steadfast and sure in Christ Jesus. And you need to know that for yourself through the Scriptures and own it and never move from it. Because everything that's coming down the pipe in this world is going to challenge every one of those pieces of armor in your life. And you must have that shield of faith built on knowing for yourself because you search these things out yourself. And now it's a living truth in your life. It's important. John 14 and 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You want to go to the Father? You go through Christ. He is our salvation. John 3, 16, 17, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son in the world, to the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Christ and Christ alone is our salvation. He is our Savior. Our hope is in Him alone. He alone can save. Don't look to politicians, pastors, or people, finances, or family, or friends. Christ Jesus is our salvation. His salvation is the helmet which we wear in the battles we face. God is our ever-present help in our time of need. Psalms 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. Though the earth is transformed and the mountains are toppled into the depths of the sea, though their waters roar and foam and the mountains quake in the surge. Isn't that neat? David says, I will not be afraid because God is his salvation. He's our salvation as well. And though the earth is transformed, because there's transformation taking place right now, I don't care what you think about what I have to say about the things and the events that are going on in the world. They're a reality. Open your eyes. You don't have to, you don't have to open them very far. Just open them a crack, and you'll see what's going on. Things are being transformed, whether you like it or not, and we're going to see what happens in the next short little while here. But I won't be moved because my salvation comes from God. He is my helmet of salvation. My salvation is sure in Him. Luke 1 and 47, And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Does your spirit rejoice in God your Savior this morning? Or is He not really your Savior? Are you still looking to people and to things to bring a sense of security into your life? People do it. They don't even realize that they're doing it. But God's not their salvation. Maybe we've got a new prime minister. That would be our salvation. Well, I'd like us to see a new salvation, but I think, you know what? they got a way of corrupting everybody. There's a lot of garbage going on. And it doesn't seem to matter who gets into power. All of a sudden, they're going down the same road. They're not our saviors. We only have one savior. His name is Jesus Christ.
Ephesians 5.23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. We only have one Savior, Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not as a result of work so that no one can boast. Man, I rest in that all the time. Rest your hope fully in the grace of God that is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Christ is revealed as my Savior, my righteousness, my sanctification, I, I wear that. I own it because I don't want to be moved from it because troubled you are if that ever happens. You need to be fully convinced that salvation is by grace through faith and it's not of yourself. Thank God it's not of myself. Thank God I don't have to uphold it because you know what? I'd get up and I'd walk out the church at this moment because I'm doomed. I'm totally doomed. I have no right to be standing here sharing anything with you guys, and you guys have no right in this building either. Because our salvation is only kept by God's power through Jesus Christ. And that's your helmet. The moment you think that it's up kept and it's maintained by your efforts and your good works, i got news for you. You got on a hockey helmet. Not the helmet of salvation. You got on something, but it's deception. You need to be fully convinced that salvation is by grace through faith. It's not of yourself. It's a free gift of God. There is an ongoing battle in the minds of every believer trying to persuade them that salvation has to be earned and maintained through works of the law and the flesh. However, that is a deception of the enemy and warfare in your mind. And that's exactly why you need to have on firmly the helmet of salvation. Romans 10 and 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that the, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Finished. Do you believe it in your heart today that Jesus Christ is Lord? Do you have a problem confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord? Then you're saved. Romans 10 and 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 1 and 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation. To everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek, it is the power of God unto salvation. So we wear this helmet of salvation on our head, and through the gospel, the power of God infuses that helmet of salvation with power. It becomes alive, it becomes active, and it becomes powerful. It is supernatural in its design. It's not made of carnality. It's not fleshly. It's not earthly. The helmet of salvation is supernatural. It is the armor of God. It's His armor. And it's empowered by the gospel. You were saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, continue with that same faith you trusted in for salvation to have faith in Christ Jesus, our Savior, as your helmet of salvation. God's ability to save is our helmet in spiritual battle. In spiritual battle, we need to supernatural protection, and God's salvation is just that. It is supernatural in every way. Jesus alone is our Savior. We need supernatural protection. We need supernatural direction. We need supernatural wisdom. And when we put on our helmet of salvation... Our salvation as a helmet. We receive all that. Ephesians 1 and 13. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Isn't that something that you need to take to heart? 
and believe him with all your heart that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you believed in Jesus Christ. God sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise. I have that firmly planted in my brain. It's part of my helmet of salvation. I don't sway from that. I debate it with people. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I like what Andrew Womack says. It's like vacuuming, vacuum packing stuff. When you got saved, God vacuum packed your spirit so that it cannot be contaminated. It's born of incorruptible seed and God has sealed it with his Holy Spirit of promise. Yes, your flesh is a problem. Yes, your soul, your mind, all of those things are, are, are need to be transformed and renewed and, and they need to be sanctified. But our spirit that is born of God has been perfected in Christ Jesus. Our salvation is sure. And we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Get it in your head and never let go of it. It's your helmet. Understand these truths. Now I'm redeeming the time. You understand what I'm trying to get at. This is important. So many Christians struggle. So many Christians are up and down like a yo-yo. Every trial that comes along has to end in devastation, and they've got to pick up all the broken pieces like a car accident in an intersection and start all over again. It's like, why don't you put on some safety gear? Put on your armor. You do not have to be devastated by every little thing that comes on in life. Some Christians, you can hit them with a Mack truck and they walk away from it. They get hit by these big issues that come along and they stand and they stand strong and they stand firm. They're back in church the next day. They're doing what they've been called to do. And it's like, I got, I got, some, I got to talk to someone about that. They'll talk to you about it, but away they go. They carry on. Others, they get a hold of you and, oh man, you know, they... they you know, they got a sliver the other day, and it's Devastation City. You know? No, it was a sliver. It wasn't a tornado. You know? It didn't drive a tree through your heart. You know? Come on. Put on the armor of God. Doesn't it make sense? The Scripture will protect you in spiritual battle. Wear it like a helmet of salvation. Knowing the scripture fortifies our minds that our salvation is steadfast and sure. They protect us from the lies and the deceptions of the enemy. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to say this whether I get in trouble for it or not. When it comes to things of the rapture and believers, born again Christians getting left behind, I'll debate you on that every day of the week. Because we are not destined to wrath. God has not destined us to wrath, but to salvation. That's part of our helmet. And if you go there, you're going to have an argument on your hand. Because the truth is, we are not destined to the wrath of God. He is our salvation. We don't have some kind of clumsy form of salvation that comes from God. No, God himself is our salvation. I'm not trusting in anything that comes from the flesh. Jesus Christ is my salvation. He is my righteousness. He is the preparation of the gospel that's on my feet. He is the truth that girds my loins. He is that shield out in front of me. And when we live like that, it changes the way we look at doctrine. And so I want you to understand this. Not because I want to debate, but because that's the only thing that we have as our salvation. Nothing else will suffice. Sorry. Salvation comes in one form. Righteousness comes in one form. And I'm not better on a good day than you. And I'm not worse than you on my worst day and on your best day. No. Because my righteousness is Christ Jesus on my worst day. And on my best day, it's the righteousness of Christ. And on your worst day, your righteousness is found in Christ and in Him alone. You've got none of your own. Your salvation is in Christ Jesus and in Him alone on your worst day. 
right? I run to the Father and I fall into grace. My heart needs a surgeon, but my soul needs a friend. And Jesus is that friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he's with us always until the end. Well, I don't know. I'm halfway through, but I think we'll just end it there. We're over time. God bless. Remember, your salvation is in Christ alone. He is your helmet of salvation. Wear the helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation, right? Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.